Today's show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash marku42. There are over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. You lucky guys. And now, here's the show. This is Gareth David Lloyd, Yanta from Torchwood, and you are listening to Mark Who 42's Universe. Welcome to Mark Who 42's Universe, Doctor Who Universe, that is. Uh, wait, wait, what's that? I'm Mark Baumgarten, showrunner of Mark Who 42's Universe. I have agreed to this memory wipe of my own free will. God. Oh, I hear other people. Who are you? I'm Patricia Helm. <laughs> and I have all my memories intact. <laughs> I'm Eduardo M. Fryer, and I've downloaded everything. And I'm Christian Basil, and I promise you all out in the audience that after 60 minutes, you'll probably want your memory wiped, so it's okay. Oh, no, don't, don't do that to them. <laughs> don't, don't make them not want to hear the show. And to keep them from doing that, let's go to... the memories let's go to doctor who news with our doctor who correspondent patricia helm patricia what is this warm thing that oh oh my god what am i doing here what is this squishy thing in my hands that, who are you people where's my mommy i'll never look at a bag <laughs> of gummy worms the same again <laughs> who are you why are you looking at me like that stop that anyway the final numbers are in for listen from last week uh-huh. it was seen by 7.01 million people in Britain, and their final AI score was an 82 out of 100. Oh, so the audience appreciation was 82. Yes. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. Now, the overnight numbers for Time Heist is 4.93 million, which is a little bit up from last week. Woohoo! So that's good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I did, too. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was much better than Listen. (laughs) (laughs) Last week, we had talked about there was a rumor that Nick Frost was going to be in the Christmas special. Yeah, a rumor. It was a rumor, but it's been confirmed. Yeah. That he's going to be in there along with Nathan McMullen. He's from Misfits. Mm -hmm. And Michael Troughton. Wow. Which... The last name should be familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Doesn't he owe me money? <laughs> so, so we've had, we've you know, Patrick Trouton was a doctor. We've had David Trouton on several times on Doctor Who. And now we get Michael Trouton. So we get all the Troutons. Next thing we need is Sean Pertwee guest starring as his dad's character. Sean Pertwee that as the third awesome. doctor. Sean Pertwee as the third doctor. <laughs> New hashtag. Yeah. New hashtag. Sean Pertwee 3. Well, Nick Frost, he's very excited to be in the show because he's a big Doctor Who fan. Uh-huh. And he said that the read-through was very difficult for me. I just wanted to keep stuffing my fingers in my ears and screaming, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that works, Nick. Sorry. Yep, sorry. When you you're actually in it, show. you can't, yeah, you can't, do, you that. can't do that. Maybe they'll give him his own memory worm. There you go. <laughs> There's a little bit of interesting news. It doesn't really have to do with Doctor Who, but it has to do with Mr. Matt Smith. He shut has been... up. Shut, everybody, just, just shut up. Shut up. Shut, shut up. Shut it up, up, up. What, wait a minute. What did you say? What did you say? D, D, shut up. Say it again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. You don't have the yeah. eyebrows to pull that off. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have the. D- don't don't do that again. You just you don't have the eye. You don't you don't have the commanding shut eyebrows. Up. Everybody, <laughs> just shut up. Order say now. Hey. Trish, hey. Trish, D, hey. shut up. Trish, hey. D, shut up. Matt Smith has been cast as Mr. Collins in the movie Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Yeah, uh, that's, that's uh, going to be amazing. Now, I love that book. Well, I, I'm also a big fan of the original Pride and Prejudice. And mm-hmm. so I think he'll be good as Mr. Collins. I, you know, I don't know if any of you guys have read Pride and Prejudice, but he's a bit of an annoying character. So <laughs> <laughs> a new issue of Doctor Who magazine came out and it had synopsises for the next couple episodes in there. Mm-hmm. And so for next week, the caretaker... Mm-hmm. 
It says the Cole Hill School has a new caretaker. He hides a strange blue box in his cupboard and carries a sonic screwdriver instead of a broom. Clara is suitably mortified, but the doctor has got bigger things to worry about, especially when Danny Pink starts to work out just what has been going on. Yeah, we saw that at the very end of last week's episode, the trailer for that. That looks very interesting. Now, it says that there's some similarities to The Lodger. Mm -hmm. With the doctor trying to blend in, you know, with the humans. (laughs) But he's far ruder and has no (laughs) patience. (laughs) I can see that. Dr. House. Yes, Dr. House. (laughs) Just be a very anti-school reunion opening. He just walks in with his eyebrows. Everybody shut up. (laughs) And then this episode will be the first major appearance of the recurring character of Courtney, which I'm guessing is going to be... Danny Pink's sister. Yeah, the third companion, if they do a foursome. And apparently the doctor sees kind of a kindred spirit in her because she has no social niceties. Oh, Oh, and I guess (laughs) since he has a sister, uh, something I said last time about how could he have family trouble. Uh, You know, how could he have been dealing with his family? I guess I was wrong there. And apparently the doctor's going to be very rude to Danny, especially when he finds out that he used to be a soldier. Shades of Into the Dalek. (laughs) Didn't he see all those wells that he dug? Yeah, the wells. Do you guys want to hear about the synopsis for the the following episode, Kill the Moon, or do you want to save that? No, no, we always do that. Let's let's do Kill the Moon, especially because next week's show will not feature a new segment, so go ahead. Ah, that's true. Okay. The moon has changed, and now it's threatening to wipe out all life on Earth. But when the doctor and covers its secrets, he realizes the situation is graver than anyone thought. Can he stand by and let humanity destroy the moon? Now, that was from Doctor Who magazine, but there was also a BBC released a Yeah, what's synopsis. the BBC release one? Okay, it says, in the near future, the Doctor and Clara find themselves on a space shuttle making a suicide mission to the moon. Crash landing on the lunar surface, they find a mining base full of corpses, vicious spider-like creatures poised to attack, and a terrible dilemma. When Clara turns to the doctor for help, she gets the shock of her life. Oh, so this is going to be a lighthearted family affair. Yeah. Something everybody can watch. Hey, the baby can watch this too. I remember from a couple months ago, the pictures that came out of the TARDIS crew wearing the orange spacesuits going out on the moon. Yes, this will be Courtney's first adventure. Yeah. She begs the doctor for a trip on the TARDIS. Hopefully she'll be a little better than uh, Angie. Yeah. Oh my god, this is so lame. Oh my god, this is so boring. It's the moon. I don't want to be on the moon again. I saw the moon and the fake moon. It's stupid. The moon is stupid. The moon is stupid. (laughs) Where's the cheese? It was supposed to be green cheese. My mommy lied. Do with that cheese? All right, anyway. TARDIS, now, do as you're told. (laughs) So there are a bunch of human astronauts on the moon. And they're being led by someone named Hermione Norris. And what they're trying to do is nuke the moon because the moon has become heavier and it's washing away the Earth under huge tidal waves. Oh, so we could have Space 1999 have the nuclear explosion (laughs) blast off the moon, which travels through space. And we could have Martin Landau and Barbara Bain uh, be guest stars on this episode. Well, not really. I guess you can't have Martin Landau. No. We'll see. see, And where's where's Uatu the Watcher when you really need him? (laughs) He's supposed to be living on the moon. Oh, oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. Non-interference. Okay. uh, Useless. Yeah, but the Time Lords are non-interferers, too, and they interfere a lot, too. Uatu could interfere if he really wanted to. And he's done it for the Fantastic Four. Many times he's, Many he's times. done that. Every time it's the same thing. I have an oath I must not break, yeah. but I have no choice in this matter. It's like, geez, man, have you Yeah, ever... Uatu's got no will. Yeah, exactly. Now, this episode is co-written by Peter Harness and Stephen Moffat. Again, And originally it was written for Matt Smith's doctor, but they saved it. And Peter Harness, he hints that there is a life-changing dilemma for Clara. And he says that by the end of the episode, that things will never be the same again due to what the doctor does. Ah. He says he doesn't know how people are going to take it. He's just waiting for people to see it, but he has no idea how people are going to react and that he's never seen the doctor do something like this before. Well, if he kills Clara, I'll be all for it. (laughs) No, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. No, I shouldn't say that. Now, they also had a synopsis for Mummy on the Orient Express. I guess we don't need that spoiler alert. If no, the spo- the these aren't real spoilers because they're only giving the, a wide synopsis. They're not actually narrowing down what they actually are going to be about. So, Mummy on the Orient Express. The famous Orient Express, thundering along on its journey across space, comes to a sudden stop. The hyperspace ribbons under its wheels faded, and it begins to float. Engine's dead. Everything's deathly quiet. 
and the facade drops away, murmured the doctor, delighted. Upon which he finds himself very much wanted, for on the Orient Express murder has been committed, and the murderer is still on board. The doctor investigates. He raises his mighty eyebrows and thinks with his little gray cells. First we have the Titanic in space, and now we have the Orient Express in space. Can we have someone who comes up with original names of ships in space? I mean, really? <laughs> so, I mean, so wait, why can't Mark, we have, like, the uh, Clanicula, uh, the murder on the Clanicula spaceship? You know, why do we have to go with Orient Express? We are that stealing. sounded like it hurt, Mark, just a uh, second. Clanicula did hurt. It did hurt. But Mark. Yes? Mark, choo-choo train in space? Choo choo train in space, I'd watch it. It's the Galaxy Express 3 9. It's not the Orient Express. Yeah, but now you're mixing anime with Doctor Who, and, and I don't know what's going on here. Galaxy Express is an awesome anime. It, it okay, is. Leiji Matsumoto is. is awesome. Do not dis Leiji Matsumoto, okay? I will fly back to Florida to kick your butt, okay, if you dis Leiji Matsumoto. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do well, it. Oh, this show's going well. <laughs> don't do it. I think we should so, start over. <laughs> Trish, what else? They caution, though, that even though the title suggests that it could be like a silly type of episode, that it's not. That it's actually very dark with a lot of deaths. They're calling it a claustrophobic horror. And it was actually, the mummy was deemed too scary by the BBC, and so it's going to actually have to come on at a later time slot. Now, see, I'm a little worried about this mummy on the Orient Express, because the mummy... I mean, what if it's uh, the Orient Express comes from Akatan? Shut up. And it's no, that no, mummy. No, no, no. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah, can you take that Orient Express and drive it over Mark's house? <laughs> now, it, says the, it says that the mummy kills its victims by walking towards them, and they only have 66 seconds to live. 66 seconds. A lot to you do. You can do 66 seconds. Bring me knitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Bring me a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's all the news I have except for the um, birthdays we have. Oh, we have birthdays this week. We, we have, have birthdays. This week. It's actually um, birthdays this week. It's actually um, yesterday, September 22nd. Billy Piper and Fraser Hines. And those are the two for this week. Hey, two big ones. Two big birthdays. It's Rose and Jamie, two, two, two really popular companions. Yeah, I'm sure we had beautiful pictures of them on the site, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got, got, got some nice birthday banners. Yeah, birthday banners are nice. Well, okay, I guess that's the end of the news, and now it's about time to go to Time Heist. What do you guys think of it? Or better known as Ocean 4's Not Dead Team. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I like. Well, I liked it. I liked it a lot better than Listen. Mm -hmm. I also, I mean, for me, for me, it, it felt like it felt like classic Who. It felt like the new show when it first came back. You know, it was right. nice and standalone. And you know, funny that Christian should start with with the similarities because uh, when I first saw the teasers and 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 everything for for the episode, I was thinking about uh, DC Comics about the um the comic suicide squad especially because of Psy and because of that that image in the teaser where you had all these villains showing up like in images i thought this was going to be a suicide squad thing where uh, everybody was going to be drafted and it was like oh you you have to do what we say but looking at it looking at how um at how the episode came out for me it felt more like another dc comic uh secret 6 ah that, that's especially where you have you know where you have People brought together, and it's like, oh, if you do this, you get this. What's your heart's desire? What do you really want? Hey, I'll give it to you. You know, and even to go further. I mean, if anyone's have, Mark, did you? You're a classic comics guy. Did you yeah. ever read Secret Six? Yeah, yeah. I think remember you got a good. You got a good analogy here. No, and remember, remember the Secret Six had Mockingbird. You never knew who they were. They were just some secret boss. You know, same thing here with the architect. I mean, I wouldn't I, – there's a part of me that wants to grab one of the writers and be like, hey, did you read Secret Six? Be honest. I did like it, and one of the things I really liked, and I hate to hop on the I hate Clara bandwagon because I don't really, I don't really, I don't really hate her so much as she was just really, she's just getting annoying. Uh -huh. But for once, she was not the center of attention in this episode. Yeah, yeah they could have done. This, they could have actually. Liked it. They actually could have done this whole episode without her. They could have. There wasn't any point for her being there. 
And I think Mark wanted that that way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Mark, did you notice that the one time that the doctor tried to use the sonic screwdriver, he failed? Yeah, it didn't work on... On the lock. Lock, yeah. Yeah, that did was... You, did that you was cheer? Cool. I cheered. I cheered. Did, 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 people, did people look at you when you... No. Did no, people look it, at you they, when you cheered? They looked at, when, they when looked at me weird, but not for that reason. Oh, okay. Uh, for many <laughs> other reasons than that. Other reasons. Okay. <laughs> but not for that reason. Okay. None of them we can label on here right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but did you also notice there wasn't any there was no mention of promised land or missy at all again yeah missy wasn't there again it, the promised land wasn't there again that's two episodes that they haven't brought the ark in but they did have a mention of another arc oh yeah the, yes. the, the danny pink arc well no the am i a good man oh well she says he she did say he was yes yep so that brought that up but again did you notice that he, even though the she do, hasn't even though, met many, she hasn't met yeah. many. If I remember, but she even said. though you know she didn't end up dying, the doctor was still there, the one convincing her to kill herself. <laughs> you know, what I mean. <laughs> well, maybe the, the doctor knew what they really were; those things, not that they weren't. Uh, he, he, no, he seemed pretty shocked. Yeah, he seemed yeah. pretty shocked. But he shouldn't have if he remembered. Well, he didn't remember. He didn't. Rem- I know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't remember. Yes. Memory wipe. But we'll get back to that. Christian, what do you think of the episode? All I know is if they ever offer me at the restaurant super salad, guess what? Extra croutons, please, right now. Forget that. <laughs> Done with the... Soup. I noticed that I, I think I know now the safe in my Bank of America, that little chamber that I, you know, if I withdraw a little bit too much money, if I start to see that open, that thing comes out of there, I am running the heck out of my bank right there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think. Sorry for the extra that. withdrawal. Bye bye. Yeah, I, I don't think SunTrust has that yet. I enjoyed it. I, I thought there were a lot of similarities to previous episodes that kind of paid a little homage to it, like Hyde at the end, where we're rescuing the monster's girlfriend from out of the uh, the safe. Yeah, yeah, that that well, well, we're giving it away that similarity yeah. and a kind of a little homage to the Rings of Akatan mm-hmm. for the scene where the Doctor is getting for supified for a better term, but he's he telling said the, the word. monster. He said, he the, said word. the word. He said the word. <laughs> he's getting, a, you know, he's with the monster, but he's like, go ahead, take it, take it all, take, you know. I, what exactly does he say? I no, he's like, why am I here? He's like, why? Why, why am know, I here? Why am I here? You know, but he's I telling him, was... just go for it. You know, look, look at to me why I'm here. And, yeah. you know, we think he's dying and all that, but he's really taking advantage of the situation. So I saw those little homages to it. Other than that, uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I didn't see any reason why Clara should be there, or probably for now the rest of the season. Yeah. <laughs> well, but but it, you know, it was it, it was nice when the phone rang at, in the opening scene that they brought up the uh, woman in the, in the shop arc yeah. as well, because that you know it's going to be somewhere along the way. St. John, and you know, finally they're getting to it. As so funny as it sounds, I like, and I'm probably going to probably get pistol whips by somebody from one of our fans but the bill and ted moment where he you can see where everything that he's supposed to have thought out because mm-hmm. i was just waiting trash can trash can remember trash can <laughs> something to fall off of that and then my you, brother you know, actually just... said the exact same thing one oh yeah he said the exact same thing he was like this is like bill and ted <laughs> it is it, it, that moment where he has you can see him planning out everything in the future so his past self knows what to do I just thought that that was cute. And we had discussed back when when we were thinking that the doctor would influence himself without actually being there kind of episode. And I mentioned, I think, a couple episodes ago. And now to actually see it, that was mm-hmm. kind of cute. And how much he hates himself, too. <laughs> how much he hates himself. Oh, he totally hates himself. He said it. Oh, he yeah. totally said, I hate, I, him. hate the, <laughs> I hate the architect. And, I hate him. And after uh, hearing yeah. that line, you know what I remember was Amy's choice when he's talking to uh, the uh, the Dream Lord. And he goes, there's only other, one other person that hates me as much as you do. And that's all I can think about in that episode was, mm-hmm. oh, it's himself? Would you guys like to visit the Satanic Nebula? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 if it looks like a, a, a dryer, a, a, a washer and dryer, I, I, my, I don't know if I'd want to go there. Apparently, you spin but around we, and round. It's a yeah, big gold centrifuge of cleaning. Yeah, and, and the Laguna of Lost Stars. Nice fish. <laughs> oh. Hopefully, those fish aren't grumble jacks. I hope they are, because those are good eating. 
the doctor said they were good eating. We had mentioned that on the last episode, uh, last episode when we were talking about listen, but the scene where the doctor was underwater with the TARDIS door opens looking at the puffer mm-hmm. fish, I was just waiting for him going, hello, whale. <laughs> <laughs> now, we were talking about how, you know, Clara wasn't really needed, not the center of attention. Right. There was a, I saw an article this week where um, they, uh, I forget what magazine it was from or whatever but they were interviewing Stephen Moffat and he said something that I did not agree with and I wanted to get your guys' reactions he said that the companion is the main character and should be the main character and I'm like isn't the doctor supposed to be the main character he's I was contradicted like, himself yeah he was okay. saying how Clara is you know supposed to be the main character of the of the show because you know that's who the, the audience identifies with but yeah, i'm thinking co- but you know they identify with the companion and you know with the human and i'm thinking well, what about the classic who when you know his companion was another alien or, you know leela or something like that how is that supposed to be the the audience identify uh, identifier you know i mean as far as i understood it the companion is there so the doctor has to explain what they're doing so we know what he's doing it's not that we need a human companion to identify with and so I just don't understand why he would say that Clara is the main character and should be the main character. I got to agree with you, Trish. From what I understand, if we watched past interviews, they have acknowledged that the, the companions are the audience's view of the doctor. They see through the doctor through their eyes. But I've never looked at them as being a central character. They are they are critical mm-hmm. to being a point in the storyline to being the point in the climax, to better understanding the Doctor and through their relationship, but to be more than the Doctor, which Clara has been showing over and over and over again, it's getting annoying. I mean, it might as well be called Clara Who, or what was it, Mary Sue Who? Clara Clara (laughs) Sue Who. The Adventures adventures of the Teacher and the... Instead of Mary Sue, Clara Who. I like that. that The new new, new name should be a Clara Who. Who. Isn't that a character from the Grinch story or something like that? (laughs) (laughs) Cindy Lou. Lou. I heard that. You know, when uh, Trish showed me the story, I'm just like, no, no, absolutely not. No, you know, a show... I said this last week. A show like Doctor Who, we don't care about you know the mundaneness of Clara's life you know we that, that that's not what we're here for we're here to see all the cool stuff that the uh you know that the cool adventures that they go on the places that they've never been to you know that's what we're there for remember uh, one of our first episodes we did a, a thing about the nature of companions and yeah they're there for audience identification or you know, to ask the questions we would ask, like, what is the Satanic Nebula? But we're not supposed to be like, oh, I, I want to hear more about this person, not about the Doctor. That's that's not, you know, that I, I don't know where Moffat is getting that from. I see. It, it, the, the, the companion is all supposed to bring up different challenges to the Doctor, just like a different story. It's supposed to bring a different angle, but it's supposed to drive the story, in some cases, the way Bad Wolf drove the story. In the, some cases, that uh, Donna drove the story she was kind of hitting on you know not hitting on but you know nagging and and being negative to the doctor but it it was in a good way and it and eventually it revealed itself why she was like this i mean we get to identify not only the doctor but donna herself when when he splits off into his little clone thing and he realizes who donna is and she's really bent up with that but it still to me drove the story because it gave the characterization of the, the splintered doctor. Even classic companions. I mean, someone like Sarah Jane or someone like Ace, even there, I mean, you know, it's, it's not they drove the story. Maybe some companions were a little more, um, how do I put this gently, a little more damsel in distress than uh, maybe, you know, modern sensibilities would like. But, you know, you still had some good companions, but it wasn't to the point where they overshadowed the doctor. You know, and we, where where the doctor was a supporting player in his own show, and we got to see a really good start of it with Ace because we really didn't have a companion where we we, we saw some development, but we didn't see like the backstory pushing the Doctor Who story around. And Ace was the uh, you know being the the Dorothy storyline was wonderful, and you know at the point where the Doctor 
had to just berate Ace to the point where she had to lose faith to save the day at that moment. Curse that was of Curse Fenric. of Fenric, yeah. Curse of Fenric. I mean, it, what, it, we started seeing that starting to happen, which would eventually evolve into the new episodes. But what Claire is doing right now, or at least in my eyes, what Claire is doing is just not driving the story. And it's still a question I'm asking almost in every episode. Why are those two together? I mean, I don't know why the doctor would keep her. Why does he decide to keep Why do, He's got all time and space. He's gotten an entourage before, as we saw in Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. Why does he keep her? I want to get somebody else. Well, you know, why don't we take a break and we can consider why he should keep Clara. We'll be right back on Krypton Radio here at Mark Who 42's Universe. <laughs> Attention all Whovians! While you're waiting for the new episode of Doctor Who, start your own adventures with a book from Mark Who 42 Books. They carry unique and rare books at affordable prices. Visit Amazon.com slash shops slash Mark Who 42. That's Amazon.com slash shops slash Mark Who 42. Mark Who 42 Books. Set your imagination free into the Hooniverse. Grab your helmets because it's time to assemble Mask. The GeekCast Radio Network has launched Mask to Mayhem with your hosts Optimus Solo and TF2 and Mike. This podcast covering all 75 episodes of Mask will feature in-depth analysis of every episode, talk on the toys, and more. Mask Mayhem will run 30 podcast episodes. You can find us at iTunes and on www.geekcastradio.com. Get your spectrums ready as podcasting is the ultimate weapon. Geeks Moment of Science. Here is the lab director and your human host, Dr. Geek. Hello, everyone. For today's Moment of Science, I would like to talk about immortality. Oh, I know. I can hear you. But, Doc, who wants to live forever? Granted, immortality normally comes at a price. You either end up locked in an endless battle with others of your kind, or you spend eternity brooding over your life's missteps. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to be like that. Mr. Creature, can you come in here, please? I need your help with the demonstration. Sure thing, Doc. (coughs) Test Subject 1, reporting for duty. Ah, Mr. Creature. Perfect. Listeners to our show know Mr. Creature is our primary test subject here in the lab, and he has successfully undergone many experiments, even if one or two have caused him to remunerate into a new incarnation. It turns out this new body is healthier and more human than I've ever been, percentage-wise. Exactly. You're the perfect candidate to help me demonstrate one possible key to immortality. It turns out that when an adult scarlet jellyfish, or medusa, is injured, it morphs back into its infant state, known as a polyp. Then the polyp becomes a new medusa, allowing the jellyfish to regenerate between an adult and infant state in about two months. Simple, no? Uh, you're kidding, right? I never kid about science. We spliced your DNA with that of a jellyfish a while ago. And Professor Kibota of Kyoto University in Japan has been successful in making one jellyfish regenerate 12 times. You've only remunerated once, so you have plenty of lives to spare. Uh Uh-oh. Relax. I'll use my sonic servo to trigger the rejuvenation cycle of the jellyfish DNA. It should be mostly harmless. Wait, what? Ah! It works! And now to reverse the procedure and restore Mr. Creature. Ah. Well. Hmm. Okay, so this happened. Never fear. I'm sure I can restore Mr. Creature. Eventually. In the meantime, everyone should apply their geekdom. This moment of science was brought to you by Dr. Geek's Laboratory of Applied Geekdom, a Brazen Wench production, copyright 2014, in association with this network. Join the adventure. Download the full Labcast at www.drgeeklab.com and follow us at facebook.com slash drgeeklab and twitter.com slash drgeeklab. 
Pixels in the Animation is the next cartoon review podcast series in the GeekCast Radio Network's long history of review series. We've had Transformers, He-Man, and Mask as far as the cartoon review podcasts we have done. Now we bring in TV's Mr. Neil as he and TFG and Mike break down nine video game cartoon series. Steve Megatron will join us for the Mega Man and Sonic episodes. We will be reviewing and analyzing every episode of the Mario, Zelda, Captain N, Mega Man, Donkey Kong, and Sonic cartoons. You can expect us to go in-depth and also talk about the game franchises that spawn these cartoons. So tune in summer 2013 as we find the pixels in the animation. Hi, I'm number one New York Times best-selling author, Tony Lee, and you're listening to Mark Who 42. We're back on Krypton Radio. This is Mark Who 42's Hooniverse, Doctor Who Hooniverse. I'm Mark Baumgarten. With me are Patricia Helm, Eduardo M. Fryer, and Christian Basil. And we were trying to figure out why the Doctor keeps Clara. And even after the break, I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> I, I thought about it hard, and I just could not I could not come up with it. You know, I would have rather him kept Psy or Sabra <laughs> as a companion and <laughs> drop Keller off and see ya. <laughs> How about Blue from uh, Into the Dalek? I wanted him to pick up Maid Marian right now. Maid Marian would have worked <laughs> yeah, too, yeah. yeah. But, but, but let me pose that question to you and the audience. Why, why do you think Clara is staying on board? She's the impossible girl. Yeah. Yeah, and, no, it's okay. impossible to answer. Now, can, that was a cop out. <laughs> can I ask you a question about the, this? Uh, sure. Actually, has to do with the episode. Um, the part where they actually encounter the teller, you know, when he's in his hibernation chamber. Oh, oh, the teller. The teller was a cool character, but you know, when he first locks onto Clara, and somehow she's able to shake him off. How was she able to shake him off? And yet Saber couldn't. Um, she got. She got stuck. I think he was. Wasn't he amid hibernation at the time? But when uh, when Saber got latched on he was waking up wasn't that what was happening he well no he latched on to clara and then she did something and threw him off and he put his head back and roared and then that's when they all ran well maybe that's something we'll probably see down the line that that might be an explanation to that Uh, and the other Thirty-five thousand explanations we need from the last four. And like even when he even when he caught her in the hallway when she was running, she wasn't as affected by him as as the others were. Did you notice that? I mean, she wasn't like clutching her head and wasn't like in pain or anything. Not like everybody else. It's probably because like to compare that scene, the hallway, with the first person that we saw being affected by the teller's abilities. The teller may have just been kind of sending feelers out, just trying to latch on to, you know, the biggest feeling of guilt that he can find. So what did it's Clara not... have to feel guilty about? That's what, Oh, that was what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Actually, or maybe you know she that's... didn't have anything to she feel was guilty less about, guilty, that's how yeah. she survived. Right. Well, 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 first, well, first of all, I can think of two things she'd feel guilty about. One is the obvious thing. She's breaking into a bank. You know, that that in of itself. Uh, the other thing is she could feel guilty that instead of saying no to the doctor, she got roped into this adventure. She's supposed to be going out on a date, and yet she's taking this detour to go on an adventure with the doctor. There you go. Two feelings of guilt that can be latched onto. But then why did Sabre have more? Well, it could – well, could We just don't know be, her I mean, backstory. We don't know. And, actually, and it, could also, was... it could also be like – it could also be just a matter of Sabra being closer or guilt from all the people that she's turned away thanks to her powers. It could just be that at the time when everybody's running, she's more panicked. I'm also uh, finding it interesting that Clara was the only one that didn't have a gift waiting for her in the vault. Yeah, Clara didn't have if a gift. If you really think about it, she, she was the only one, one that didn't have it. She yeah, didn't <laughs> She didn't deserve yeah. one. Clara <laughs> Is it, sort of gift. Did she just get drug along by the doctor? Yeah, I mean, pretty you know, much. She, well, yeah, I, suspect, I, think that's... I suspect her gift was being dropped off in plenty of time to do her date. There you go. That was eight the minutes. Gift. She had eight minutes. Her gift was the Chinese food at the end. <laughs> there you go. See, yeah. And when you think about it, Clara is probably of, – of the four, the doctor's not going to get a gift because, well – he ended up being the mastermind of the whole. You know, he ended up being the mockingbird in this little secret group. So the teller and his girlfriend were were actually Clara's gifts, and the doctor didn't get one. Is that what you're saying? Well, no. What I'm saying is, since the doctor, okay, since the, doc, okay, the doctor, okay, using, see, let, let's using spoil, spoiler alert, not on the architect. Yeah. Is the doctor turned out to be the doctor? Yeah, the t- with a little bit of timey wimey, he was the doctor. But the architect and the doctor were one of the same. Do you think his gift is that he saved the last two um, members of a species from going extinct? 
That's a good game. Kind of how we, then, kind of how we, how the, you know, how we save the Time Lords from extinction. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that at the end as the gift because remember the the vault. Well, I, I mean, I could see that, but I thought the gift was Braxis because then he started to know what happened. His gift was his own enlightenment to knowing what he did, and then starting to hate himself for it. Ironically, but. I think I thought that was it. That I thought he, he hated. Found... I thought he hated himself before he found out who he was. Before he got his memory back, he hated. Definitely hated hmm. the architect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I think the gift was is that he got her to change her ways at the very, very, very end and gave the phone number mm-hmm. to the TARDIS. Say, call me, call me. Yeah, I thought I liked the call me part. I thought that was yeah. funny. So one more person that has the doctor's phone number out there for yeah. however many years. Now, what do you think of the fact that the eleventh doctor thought bow ties were cool, but the twelfth doctor thinks they are embarrassing? Well, haven't you ever looked at the uh, clothes you used to wear yeah. and thought, why did I ever wear that? So, so no more bow ties. Bow ties are no longer cool, folks. If you're wearing a bow tie, take it off. It's no longer in fashion. I liked how he said I was going for minimalist, but I think I ended up with magician. <laughs> yeah, just like the third doctor, like a John Pertwee, the magician. See, th- the king. Thank, thank you, thank you, Mark, because you know I was when he said magician, I was wondering. It's like, is that is that supposed to be a nod to the to to the third doctor? Hmm. Well, there were nods to other doctors in this episode. Why not? Speaking of nods, um, was everybody able to pay attention to the scene where um, Sai was? trying to get the attention of the teller. Yeah. So he uploaded all these images of different robbers, thieves, and ne'er-do-wells. Yes. Was anybody able to pick out uh, anyone in that lineup? I picked out a few, but go ahead. Well, should I, should I, should I let go, you know go, like, go, who I was able to... Good list. Good list. Go okay, well, well, Trish and I were able to, to like make a, a big list. Um, it's there were okay there were a few human faces that we were just like who is this I mean that could be similar to when we had brains of Morbius and they used production people they looked like gangsters and gangsters is what it looked like to me because there were a yeah. couple there was some I thought looked like an Al Capone type mm-hmm. yeah. you know yeah. like something I'd seen was. before I think that's yeah. what the humans but, were but anyway but this is okay but but this this is who. Trish and I were able to pick out. There was a Censorite there, a Slovene, whether it's Margaret or somebody else or the the, the kid that showed up in Sarah Jane. Uh, it was definitely a Slovene, an Ice Warrior, a Veil, the race from the Visitation. The Terraleptals. The Terraleptals. It may have been – I want to say it may have been the Terraleptal leader because I could swear that in the image it had the same disfigurement he had with like half the face gone. Uh, the gunslinger from a town called Mercy. Mhm. Yes, yes, it was Calor Tech. Yeah. Uh John Hart, Captain John from Captain Torchwood. John Hart, yeah, from yeah. Torchwood. The trickster from Sarah Jane, which yeah. which by the way I find I found very interesting because I mean how could you imprison or you know at least like put in a lineup the trickster because i mean he don't know he, he was kind of he was kind of on the cosmic scale of things but yeah and then yeah. and then the one that i'm sure will send anybody who read doctor who comics in the 80s oh yeah absalom dak the dalek yeah, killer the dalek killer wow but why would he be in that line i mean i've i've, well, because, I've seen a couple i think they, I've seen he like was a, a, I, I think he was a criminal until he was forced to join the army and fight the Daleks. Ah, okay. So he, he was a criminal. Oh, okay. Did you okay, notice so... there was a weevil in the lineup too from Torchwood? Oh no, I didn't notice that. Yeah, there oh, was a I weevil. Th- oh, oh god. I, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. One wonders. You know, one does. I do wonder though. I mean, what other what other ne'er do wells are in are in uh, size in that file that Sai had? Could maybe River Song be in there? Possibly. You know, she's been. Oh, she's that been would have prison. been interesting she's if been that prison. picture had been put up or, there. Or how about how about uh, Captain Jack? Because I mean, he was a con man. He was a con man. Yeah. The Ronnie. The Ronnie should. The Ronnie. The Ronnie would probably be. Well, you know, uh, would Madame Kavorian be there? You think? Possibly, or would, or or would she be considered more, or she wouldn't be considered no, she, a criminal at large? I, I don't think so, because she was just going after the doctor. She just ah, okay, that, so that was she the whole point. Have, okay, so she would be there, or or hey, would or here's someone the master would probably be in there. Mm-hmm. At least which face? The Del- which face <laughs> exactly? I, I would say hey. probably the Delgado and the Anley one would definitely be in there. The Eric Roberts one. <laughs> oh, oh, and here's oh here's another interesting one who probably would be in there. 
You think Lady Christina would be in there from plant from? Uh... Oh, it's, it's Christina Sousa. Yeah. yeah. Would she be in there? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I know the Kardashians at the end. <laughs> ow, ow, <laughs> no, 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 no. When Sabra and Sai were. You know, we thought they were going to die from, you know, from the teller. When, when they used that device, what did you guys think was going to happen? Promise Land. I, you thought, I thought Promise you Land. thought it was going like, to take up the Promise Land. Yep. I'm yeah. like, here we go. And then I was. I was thinking Promise Land when it was Sabra, but when Sai ended up. They didn't go to Missy. I was like, no, it's teleport. Now, where did the ship come from? Well, the ship was up there. I know. The ship was orbiting the planet, which actually the solar waves should have possibly hurt that ship. Uh, if you think about it, they were destroying the planet. How did the ship? The ship must have been on the far side of the planet. It may, it, it may have been on the far side. It may have also been that the ship was the TARDIS itself. They may, they may have they may have teleported into the control room. Do you remember in the Ganger episodes, the Rebel Flesh, the TARDIS was having a problem in terms of operating because of the solar flares, uh, just like this. So the TARDIS couldn't be used in this episode for the attack, mm. just like in Rebel Flesh when the TARDIS got a crash landed. Well, and then Sai said that he saw the TARDIS. On the ship. On on, on the, the ship. ship. So the ship wasn't the TARDIS. Yeah. So I don't know. But the thing is, though, I mean, did the doctor borrow a ship from someone to, and to prepare for this? I, I... Uh, the doctor did a lot of planning. He might have. You know yeah. what? Part of it, one, one thing, though, is... Maybe he got it from Dorium. No, no or maybe he could have. Well, he could have gotten he could have gotten it from the director, Carabraxis. Yeah. When when they were on yeah. the phone, she, he could have probably either called her back and then she would have said, oh, and by the way, You'll probably want to reward the people who are with you. If you go to this section in the vault, you'll find a DNA suppressor. That should help your shapeshifter. If you go to this, you'll find this. It should, it should help with your, with your hacker. She may, have, she may have also told him, if you go here, there's a ship you could probably use. What did you think about the big reveal that Miss Del Fox was a clone of Carabraxis? Clever. I was surprised. A surprise, clever, and if you look at dialogue, uh, they mm-hmm. kind of led into it without – Yeah, she said, she, you know, why do you still work for her? The face fits, and I'm familiar with the director. Yeah. I'm painfully familiar. And the actress who played her, Keely Hawes, I loved her on Ashes to Ashes, the sequel, or rather the spinoff, and I guess it was a sequel, to Life on Mars. But she did good here. She really did good here, especially the differences between the director and Miss Del Fox, yeah. or Fox is, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she, she said she has one in every facility. Yeah, she did. Kind of makes me wonder. I mean, if you go to the accounting department, is there like an entire room full of Miss Del Foxes? <laughs> If you have to go make a withdrawal, is there like this line of, you know, Miss Del Foxes? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, but this is a deposit slip, not a withdrawal slip. I'm sorry, but, you you know, I mean, do you have like a line of, you know, Miss Del Foxes? And, you know, if one doesn't give you exact change, does she like curl up in a ball and go, no, 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 I haven't messed up. No, no, I didn't make a mistake. No, 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 I did not make a mistake. Please tell me I didn't make a mistake. Please, I don't want to be fired. I don't want to be fired. It's no different how they treat their employees at a real bank today, so... <laughs> Only I just want to, you know, into the incinerator, and that includes the pain. The Bank of Carabraxis opening soon near you. I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what 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 the heck happens during employee review time? <laughs> you don't <laughs> want to know. It's like, do you have like a, you know, it's it's like if you know somebody walks into the room, if like one of the guards is there with a flamethrower, they're like. Uh, uh, ma'am, is everything okay? Can I bring up one thing? Yeah. Okay, something I, something small that I, but, and I didn't mention it at the Robot of Sherwood episode, which I was going to and I forgot to. The doctor, he doesn't like Clara hugging him. You know, he's like, I'm against the hugging and acting all weird like that. But did you notice that when Maid Mary kissed him, he had a very weird reaction when she kissed him on the cheek? And then when uh, Sabre hugged him before he left, again, he had another strange reaction. Did you guys notice that? It was just this thing I noticed that he I reacts weirdly that. to affection. I mean, almost as if it pains him. I mean, the hugging pains, it gives him great pain. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the hugging he what? seems more annoyed about, but the other stuff, it's like... Uh, I no, don't know. no, when he was hugged by Sabra, when he was hugged by her, uh, and, and she let go, he was holding his arm and yeah. rubbing it yeah. like he was hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And then when That he, was when, not good. 
So is this doctor uh, opposed to affection uh, as opposed to his previous incarnations that mm-hmm. affection doesn't work here after we went through David and and uh, and Matt where they were all huggy kissy it's just like the anti affectionate doctor I don't know mm-hmm. seems that now Stephen Moffat was the co-writer of Time Heist but it was also co-written by Steve Thompson and Steve Thompson uh, did The Curse of Black Spot Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, which I remember both of those were in our favorite episodes. But I think this was uh, was Steve's best episode on Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. Who. No, definitely. Especially because unlike Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, while this also involved some timey-wimey, it wasn't cop-out timey-wimey. It, it made yeah. sense. And Christian mentioned Hyde earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. Unlike Hyde, this one worked, you know, the whole reveal that, you know, oh, the monster was trying to find a loved one. This worked right. because it wasn't a last minute thing. They actually resolved it with plenty of time, plenty of room. You know, we had a nice reunion. It wasn't, oh, here comes the TARDIS, the end. You know? Well, there's a great hula connection with Steve Thompson, too, because Steve Thompson is the other writer besides Stephen Moffat and Mark Gaddis on Sherlock. Uh, Steve Thompson has written three episodes, including Reichenbach Falls, uh, which was the season two finale where Sherlock supposedly died? Hey, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, I'm sorry, I spoiled. No, it. I already knew. I knew it from the. I knew it from the. I knew it from the episode. Read the real Sherlock. I knew it from the title. Yeah. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay. But still, not everybody. Not everybody reads Conan Doyle. Well, they should. Yes, they. Yes, that's, they should. But still, no spoilers, yeah. Mark. You as a teacher should know that they yeah. should. Hey, do you, do you do you hear me saying it's okay that they that they don't? No. Well, th- well there, you, well, there you go. See? You're right. Write that 50 times on the blackboard. Okay. <laughs> so, do you guys, so do you guys think next week is going to be anything like school reunion? Uh, uh, I hope. I, I, I Put it this way. I like it to be as good as school reunion, but I hope it's completely different. Yeah. I I, I hope it is. I got to agree with Mark. I got to I gotta agree with you. I got to agree with you on that. I hope I hope that, you know, it's that, yeah, that it, it, it can be as good. I mean, it probably won't be as good as School Reunion, but I'm hoping it's a good episode. I'm hoping that it's lighthearted in, 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 in a good way, not like – remember last week I was ragging on the whole rom-com aspect? You know, I hope that, that, that mm-hmm. this, this time that it's a little bit better done. Now, if it was like School Reunion and a former companion did come back from Classic Who, who would you want to see? Oh, good question. You know that's easy to answer. I know. Ace. Ace. <laughs> yeah, but that's but no, but, yeah. so no, but that's easy to answer if we're dealing with Cole Hill School. Ian. Ian oh. Ian or Ian, Ian and or Barbara. Bring them back. Ian could come back as the yeah. headmaster. Wasn't Ian actually listed as the headmaster in uh in Day of Day of the Doctor? It was Ian. It was Ian. It was Ian. It was Ian. So Ian, they could bring back William Russell. As he enchesters it. I think he was listed as on the board of governors or something like that. Yeah. Not that he was the oh. headmaster, but he was like the superintendent or something. Yeah. Bring Ian back. But still, yeah, bring him. Yeah, bring Ian back. I mean, even hell, so cool. it could even it could even be for like a short cameo where he welcomes John Smith. It's like, well, welcome, mi- welcome, Mister Smith. Thank you for being our new caretaker. Have I met you before? <laughs> that would be great. I'd love that. I only think Mark wants Ace back so she can chase uh, Claire down with a baseball bat and chase her around the school. <laughs> you know what? I, I have to, I have to agree. I have to agree. Oh, what a good! You call it small. <laughs> <laughs> At least Ace was inventive. She created Nitro Nine. Yeah, yeah. And what what, what have you created what lately, Clara? Created? Yeah. <laughs> I might use it on Moffat plot holes now. <laughs> No, but I enjoyed this episode, and I I hope that this starts oh, a trend. Me too. I I hope I hope the show just gets better and better. Out of ten, what do you guys give it? I'd give it a nine or a ten. I I I'd, I'd have to say a nine plus. Yeah, I, I don't. What? I'd hold it. I have to say nine. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say nine. It was an amazing episode. If we're talking out of five, I'd give it five. Lower numbers have a bell curve. <laughs> <laughs> a three. What would you give? <laughs> A four. Three. I, <laughs> if we're talking a letter grade, though, I'd have to give it a uh, – I'd give it an A. Yeah, this one deserves an A. And I think I gave Deep Breath an A, but this is a higher A than Deep Breath. I, but, but, but 
I love Vastra, Strax, and Jenny. I do. Oh, God, imagine if uh, the Doctor had brought them them for the heist. <laughs> oh, that, that would have worked. Oh, Lord. I, I, I think I could, we could write that up. Strax, you know, Strax would have pro- Strax's solution would have been just assaulting the vault with heavy explosives. You know? yeah. If the teller shows up, Strax would have probably been like, stop with the mental assault and be a man. <laughs> Grab yourself a weapon and have at thee, sir! Well, okay. Uh, do we have any last words about the episode? Don't think. Think and you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, all my, oh, my, oh, God, all my childhood guilt is coming up. No, no, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I'm sorry for that thing I did when I was 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God, all- my head hurts. What's Selfie Aldred doing these days? <laughs> She's doing the voice of uh, Trifu Tom. I bet she can still swing that bat. <laughs> she could. She can still swing the bat. Stalk her and let us know, uh, Christian. <laughs> Now, I wanted to talk uh, real briefly. Uh, we've got Time Lord Fest coming up in the Tampa area on October 19th. Christian and I are guests there, aren't we, Christian? Yes, we are. Dr. Geek's going to be there too, right, Christian? Dr. Vigay is going to be there, and... Robert Alsop, the specialist costume maker and prop designer on Doctor Who during uh, the current series, and the Sylvester McCoy era. There you go. Yeah, he created Candyman from the Sylvester McCoy area, and he created the impossible astronaut suit. He made Amy's costume and the girl who waited, the Time Lord robes and battle armor that were seen in Day of the Doctor, the space pig from World War Three. Uh, he did a lot in Aliens in London, did a lot of stuff. He's also done costumes for Dread. Star Wars Episode One, Three Hundred, Gladiator, and others, and he's going to be there, and that should be fun. Doesn't get eggs to rip my pants; he can sew it up for me. Yeah, exactly. Lewis Robinson's going to be there too. He was a film editor during the Third Doctor era, and he's also a Sherlock expert. There are other guests going to be there, and it's going to be a fabulous time. If you want to know more about it, go to TimeLordFest.com. Ken Spivey of the Ken Spivey Band is running this convention, and the Ken Spivey Band will be playing. So it's going to be fun on October 19th in Tampa, Florida. Is anything coming sooner, Mark? Oh, you know what? There is something coming up sooner. This weekend in Palm Beach County, Florida, there is going to be PalmCon. And on Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m., I will be hosting a panel on Doctor Who, which we will be talking about odd facts from Doctor Who, from the 50 years of Doctor Who. Odd facts. And we have geek of comedy Patrick Hawkins will be on stage with me talking about it. So will Nerd Nation's Gene Hoyle and possibly another guest. We're not sure yet. That's coming up next weekend in Palm Beach. If you want information on that, go to www.palmcon.net and find out about it. That's September 27th and 28th at the Palm Beach County Convention Center. It's going to be a blast. Also this weekend on September 27th is Dr. Geek Science Fair 2014. And that's going to be full of geeky science fiction science uh, for more information, go to drgeeklab.com. Ken Spivey will be playing there, too. So if you can't come to Time Lord Fest, come to Dr. Geek Science Fair. That'll be held, if I'm correct, in Bradenton. I believe so. Florida. It's a whole bunch of Florida events for you. So if you don't live in Florida, you should just – you should. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very funny. Well, for those, well, for those who live – for those who live – Closer to the West Coast or the other side of the country, Wizard World Reno is coming in November. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah, no, and, and Trish and I Trish and I will definitely be there. We are still figuring out in what capacity, but we will definitely be there. Uh, anybody who lives in the, uh, the state of Nevada, uh, anyone who lives nearby, come to Wizard World Reno. Look for the two people in the Mark Who 42 shirts. Uh, we may even have stuff to give out, uh, flyers. Wow. You know, we'll, I bet you'll have buttons. We may have buttons. Uh, we'll have buttons. I will make sure you have. Well, buttons. okay. Well, uh, <laughs> well, whatever we have, you know, if you're interested, come find us. Come look for the Marku 42 shirts, 
And hey, we may even have a recorder with us, so you may oh, even fun. hear yourselves in the show. That'll be cool. The only way to find out is to come and find us. Now, because PalmCon is happening this weekend, we will be unable to have our review show of The Caretaker next week. Uh, the Caretaker review will be put aside for the following week in addition to Kill the Moon. We'll be talking about both of those episodes in two weeks. But next week, stick around here, especially on Krypton Radio if you're a new listener. We did an interview with Andrew Cartmill that was our highest rated podcast uh, earlier this year. And I thought, hey, Krypton Radio hasn't heard it. So next week here on Krypton Radio, we're going to have an interview with Andrew Cartmill, famous for the Cartmill Master Plan. He was the last script editor of the classic series of Doctor Who. So stick around next week for that. You'll enjoy it. It's a great interview. Like I said, it was our highest rated show before, and we're putting it up again for our whole new audience, as well as our old audience. There'll be some surprises that you haven't heard last time. So come back next week. Have a good week, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Have a good week. And, uh, uh, oh, and can, somebody, and, and can somebody pick up these weird creatures that are on the floor? They, what? Don't pick them up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, 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 why are we here again? What? Oh, God. what is this thing? Ew. We're what? here to tell you that we're on Krypton Radio. You can also download our shows on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, GeekCastRadio.com, and FloridaGeekScene.com, amongst other places. And don't forget to go to our Facebook page, Marku 42s Hooniverse. Tweet us at Marku42 and visit our own website, Marku42.net, and join up. For the Hooniverse Army. See, if you if you touch those things, you would forget that. What was I saying? You were just telling you, you were just telling floor? us that you're Mockingbird. Uh, oh, was I? Okay, I'm Mockingbird. You'll hear us next week. Bye, everyone. And as Malcolm Bye. Tucker says, shut the Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love Malcolm Tucker. Mark Who 42's Hooniverse has been written and presented by Mark Baumgarten, Patricia Helm, Eduardo M. Fryer, and Christian Basil. This show was edited, produced, and directed by Mark Baumgarten. Please visit markwho42.net and register to join and be a part of the Hooniverse Army. We can be contacted by email at mark at markwho42.net with the subject line question mark. If you have worked on Doctor Who or are working on a project relating to Doctor Who and want to be on our radio show, please email our media relations director, Christian Basil, at marku42media at yahoo.com. Doctor Who and its properties are owned by the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. This show is owned and copyrighted by Mark Baumgarten, 2014. You're listening to Krypton Radio.